Let us remain standing for our national anthem. Everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How good our morning is. <laughs> so good. Uh, now, uh, to give us the opening remarks, please help me welcome the head of programs of VSO Philippines. She used to be the country director of VSO in Nepal, Thailand, and Guyana. She also finished communications degree in UP Diliman, had Masters of Development Management at Open University UK, and had Masters in Unit on Gender and Development at UP Diliman. Help you welcome Ms. Arlene Mahinay. Um, 
we established our office here as our country office since ano, last year now. So, I don't think about last year, 2017. So, um, you might not have heard of us. But PSO uh, Philippines is an organization that sends and it's a volunteering organization that sends uh, volunteers and promotes volunteering, whether or not it's international volunteers or uh, national volunteers or community volunteers. Our work is to promote volunteering all over the world. Our, our main office is in the UK, but we have offices all over the world. That's a great thing. Uh, we have our office here, but uh, we also have an office in Manila whose work is to recruit volunteers. Uh, the volunteers are sent overseas or depending on whether or not there is a need, they uh, are also assigned here in the Philippines. You know? For to become a volunteer, for example, you need to have experience you know, in a particular field. You know? So um, there are other other uh, volunteer organizations who sends uh, that sends volunteers or which promotes volunteering as well and you know accepts volunteers. You um uh, mostly you sa PSO you can volunteer in your communities. For example, you volunteer in Santa or to become a national volunteer as well as international volunteer. You have to have a certain level of experience and expertise and um, professional background. So maybe in the future, you know, um, you might be something that you would like to volunteer. And, but for you, volunteering, you can volunteer wherever you, you know, um, whatever there is a need for volunteering. Anyway, back to the peace workshop. We our program here in the Philippines is focusing on peace right now and um, working with the youth is one of the main focus. Yeah, so that's why um, we're we're happy to you know to have the workshops not just here on the team, but also in other schools and in the communities. And as I said, we're fortunate. Have enough with us uh, to take a lead on, on um, workshops like this. So I hope um, this won't be the last time that we will see each other. We, we will have in the future um, a number of activities um, to promote volunteering for the good of the communities and also to you know to help promote leadership for you, especially. Peace, no, as, as you know, um, there is uh, peace is very much um, an issue here, not just in Canada, but other parts of the country and the world. So I hope this um, we can continue to meet up with you on peace related as well as um, other developments. Uh, before I forget, uh, which I read out your. Um, anyway, <laughs> But you know that we, which I used to be a PSO volunteer in Uganda, I think. So, um, so there are there are a number of uh, returned volunteers people, uh, volunteers who have been overseas and have come back to them. Okay, so um, I hope you would have a, a productive and enjoyable um, day uh, with the workshop. And I hope um, you know this can be a start of your involvement. If you have a involvement, ask your on volunteering or on peace related issues. So, yan lang siguro. Welcome again and good morning. Thank you for giving us.
us a background on what uh, VSO is and encouraging us to be part of your institution. And now let me help, uh, help me welcome our speaker for today's forum or seminar. She is an advocate for peace building, gender and development, and conflict prevention. She taught geology for 15 years in the Ministry of Secondary Education of Cameroon, which had a management geared towards her motive of peace building. She is also a VSO Golden intern and in the final year of her master's Master of Arts degree in Peace Studies, major in conflict analysis and peace building at Silliman University, Philippines. She has also completed several internationally accredited trainings at home and abroad in the area of conflict resolution and peace building at Sweden, Austrian Studies Center for Peace and Conflict Resolution in Austria. Austria, Coffee Anna International Peacekeeping Tra Training Center, Accra, Ghana, Institution of Peacekeeping in Mali, and several trainings with the United Nations Institute for Training and Research. She is also fluent in French and English. So let's give her a warm up of those. Cha-cha-cha, 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 cha-cha-cha,
minutes, today we will be talking about some things, and I would like you to be very interactive, and very participating, so that in maybe I may mention something that we need some clarifications. You can always call me and then answer questions. So our training is on creative problem solving skills in conflict. Right. Before we get to that, I would like us to do some kind of uh, introduction and write our expectations for this training. Because we are all here seated, but we don't know each other, right? And maybe we are not from the same college. We, I know there are names written there, but I want to know you better than that. I know you've already heard about me, right? So we are going to do some kind of introduction this time before we move on. Um, can you just quickly pair yourselves? Just in pairs, and then you tell your name to the, your neighbor. You will introduce your friend. Huh? In one minute, tell us the person's name, where the person comes from. It could be your school, or I don't know. It's just in one minute, and then one funny thing about the person. So, <laughs> just tell your friends about that, and then can we just quickly stand up again, please? We will do the introduction. Just stand up. To do singular. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Is it myself? Maybe the, the neighbor. Your neighbor. Okay. So are we in pairs already? Yes. Sorry. 
Yes, the next prayer. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> you should tell your friends what is funny about you so that when we reach you, they should be able to say something. So. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Good morning, everyone. So she's my um, close friend. Uh, she came from the College of Arts Sciences and Education. Um, one fun thing about this lady. I. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, she's Gray Reyes Piempo. Uh, she came from the College of Art uh, and Sciences Education. And one funny thing about her is that uh, she used to laugh like a pig, like. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this lady standing in front of me is. Shireen Fuentes. Uh, she came from Kamanlagan. <laughs> and uh, one funny thing about her is that she gets red space when she kills. Oh. <laughs> like when she kills. I got the rinse. His name is Conflicts are natural. 
<laughs> Conflicts always lead to violence. You do with actions. If you say no, you move to your right or you move to your left. If you say yes, you move forward. If you don't know what to do, you stay on your position. In conflict, people agree to disagree. Who of us? People agree to disagree. Okay. The last question. When the conflict is avoided, it is resolved. When the conflict is avoided, it is resolved. Thank you. Um, the last one again, sorry. In conflict, people disagree to agree. The other one is people agree to disagree. Now this time, in conflict, people disagree to agree. Thank you very much. Hands up those who did not move at all. <laughs> Let me see your hand up. It's okay. Let me see your hand up. If you did not move, okay. I got stuck here. <laughs> yes, so, I yes, thank you Clap for your first please. So, by the end of it, we will actually know if we were supposed to move or not. So, right now, I would like us to have our expectations written. So, you get these papers. While you are getting the papers, this uh, this is the outline that we have for our peace workshop. What is conflict and conflict transformation? What is problem solving? What is communication that fosters peace? The role of listening, verbal and non-verbal communication in resolving conflicts. And developing your creative problem solving skills through simulations. So, we are going to have a lot of simulation exercises for the speech workshop so that you can develop the skills. So, I would like you to quickly write down your expectations on the papers that you've been given. And Yeah. 
should be able to understand the definition of keywords like conflict, peace, conflict transformation, problem solving. From the little exercise that we did, I can assume that most of us have heard about conflict already. We've heard that word conflict, all of us. And then by the end of it, we should be able to introduce to some concepts, we introduce ourselves to some concepts of understanding contradictions, be introduced to some basic skills of problem solving through the simulations that we are going to have today. So, for us to move on, what then is peace? What is peace? Have you heard of peace before? Yes. Can someone tell me what peace is about? Right? <laughs> Did I pronounce your name? Yes. What is peace? Uh, peace is that when you, uh, there is no conflict at all. <laughs> when there is no conflict at all, yes? And also, um, read somewhere that uh, peace is not the absence of war, but of justice. It's not, not the absence of war, but of justice. Yes. Understanding diversity and individuality. Because if there is a respect and understanding, there will be peace. Yes. Any other idea? Thank you. Your answers are all talking about peace. Peace has no specific definition, it depends on you how you define peace. Okay? Peace is not the absence of war or violence. When there is no war, it doesn't mean that we are peaceful. It doesn't mean that we have peace. And when there is no violence, it doesn't mean that there is no peace. Yeah? Peace means tranquility. It means tranquility on every side and well-being in wholeness. Are you comfortable in your soul? Do you have your free rights? Are your rights respected? Do you have freedom? Do you have what you need, the basic needs? Can you have this without any migrants? Can you move around freely? Can you have access to what you can bring? Well, being. This means justice. Structures are put in place to foster your well being. Do you have those structures? Do you have that justice? Somebody talked about justice. Do you have that justice prevailing so that your peace can grow? If we don't have all of this, then we are talking about negative peace. Because what you need is not in place. So we have negative peace and there is positive peace. Negative peace could be a situation whereby, for example, there is a lot of corruption, there is unemployment, there is conflict going on on other parts of the country, and maybe we have the military or the restoration forces put in place to force that there should be peace. That kind of peace is negative peace. But the real peace that we are talking about is the peace that you feel within your inner self and your environment, wherever you are, that you are comfortable. Everything, the structures that are needed to be put in place are there for you to have a comfort zone. So for you to have the wholeness, the well-being in the total human being. So that is what we talk about, positive peace. So now we know that there is negative peace and there is positive peace. Okay. What is conflict? Have you heard of conflict before? What is conflict? Can you tell me? Yes. Tessa, can you see your name? Yes. I, I take this 
need for it is uh, when two opposite uh, when two uh, two two or uh, okay person na lang two person disagree with each other and uh, or there are some uh, things that they cannot be meet in between yes thank you Another response? Conflicts? I think when there is um, disagreement and argument, that can cause conflict. And there is disagreement and argument. Disagreement? Yeah. What else comes to your mind when you have conflict? What else? Yes? Yes. Different ideas. So 
some people will really have to go to the street and say, okay, we are protesting because our president or our government is not giving us jobs. But had it been you did not go to the street to make it hear your voice, you will not have this job. And then you will have this job and the economy will start going. Sometimes, within a relationship, when you have conflict, you may not understand the skills that you have. Until you are, you are involved in the conflict, that's when you also build your skills, how you manage the conflict. And after the conflict, you realize that the bond strength in your friendship will become stronger. Because you develop some skills. The way you handle the relationship, then you discover some other things about each other. And that is how you strengthen your relationship and you become more peaceful. So these are the aspects that make up this good. Like when you manage them, and they don't escalate into violence. But when it escalates into violence, that's the time. You, and then people are dying, that's the time you see that conflicts are being So sometimes conflicts are good, they are not always good. Okay. So these are the types of conflicts that are especially provided for personal, interpersonal, state, and business. Yeah. Do we understand all of that? How do we address this conflict? Addressing conflicts, we have conflict management. We have conflict transformation. We have conflict resolution. Have you heard of this word before? Conflict management. Yes. You've heard of it? Yeah, yeah that only conflict resolution. Yes, what is that? Uh, conflict resolution, for example, here in the Philippines, uh, peace talks is ongoing. The uh, talks uh, are between government of the Philippines and the National Democratic Government. So they had this target for the, the resolution on social economic reforms. That is one of my... Are you talking about the Bank Samoro peace process? No. National Democratic Front yeah. of the Philippines, and they, are, they have ongoing peace of the South. To resolve. But I think it, uh, it ended last year because of uh, the other party did not cooperate with the government. So that, that there was no what was uh, South. There was talk and there was no peace agreement. They there was some of it that was difficult to start. So the conflict was not resolved in that level. The conflict, maybe it was just managed and transformed because they did not arrive at the solution. Okay. They did not meet. meet yes, they did not meet uh, to a final agreement to some sort. So when we talk about conflict management, it actually refers to the process, it's a whole process, the way you deal with conflicts. But you manage these conflicts in order that they should not escalate. You handle it, you try to bring some styles to handle the conflict so that you can limit the conflict from going because conflicts are very dynamic, they are not static. So in doing this, you are trying to manage the conflict. You are trying to see what you can do to prevent the conflict from escalating. But managing conflicts will not be so to a resolution. It doesn't mean the conflict has been solved. It is still there. Okay? But sometimes when you manage the conflict, it could stop it from escalating, as I already said. It do, you kind of avoid some situations whereby it may be Flashes, loss of time, so all of this. Yeah. So this also helps when you manage the conflict, when you deal with the conflict styles. And in conflict resolution, it talks about a case where both parties will encourage each other to see and have a solution to move from a zero sum mentality to a win win situation. Though it may not also be a win win. Because it may involve adjudication, whereby the conflict is just resolved 
and the people may decide, okay, we want it to be like this, we want it to be like that, and they sign, but both parties may not be satisfied. When you use adjudication, it is not really a win win. Okay? And it includes a number of methods for improving the situation of conflict or removing conflicts altogether. You either improve the situation or you remove the conflict. And again, this involves negotiations. People will negotiate. What is negotiation? I don't negotiation before. That is a really sick. I sit, yes, you have something. Yes, so it, uh, um, uh, like what I shared a while ago, uh, in peace talks, it, part of the peace talks is the uh, peace negotiation. So they have to meet uh, uh, they have to meet in the middle uh, on how to resolve the social economic problems in the Philippines so that uh, they can uh, resolve the conflict that is ongoing. Yes, negotiation. Thank you for that contribution. When we talk about negotiation, it's like how do you have to do this? In fact, we talk about test and test. I try to negotiate what what is it that you really want? And you try to find out what is it that I really want. How can we handle this amicably? We are trying to bargain. We are trying to see how we can come up with something that is peaceful and beneficial for both of us. Okay? So in doing this, we are negotiating with each other. But in mediation, mediation is a case whereby there is somebody between the two of us who are parties in the conflict. And this person can be an impartial person or a neutral person who tries to see that we come into an agreement or we've tried to resolve the conflict that we are having. So this person is our mediator and he can only be there if he's accepted by you or accepted by me. The mediator must be accepted by both parties in the conflict. And this person is supposed to be a neutral or an impartial person. Okay? And there's a lot of diplomacy in resolving conflict because Sometimes it will involve a third party coming in. So this neutral person is a third party coming in to address the case between two people or two nations in conflict. So like I said a while ago, it will involve adjudication. People make decisions and sometimes decisions may not fair for the parties to the And that is why I said it may not always be a win-win situation. Now, conflict transformation talks about the attempts to change position. This is what I like about this. Conflict transformation. It goes beyond talking about the problem on the table. It talks about dialogue. It talks about improving people's uh, uh, that is the relationship. It talks about Digging deep when you are doing conflict transformation, the root causes of the conflict. What caused that conflict? What about the goals? What about the relationships? The perceptions? That is, people always come to the conflict table maybe with some mindset about the others that they have the conflict with. But in doing conflict transformation, we try to see how we can deal with these perceptions in order to build peace so that at the end of conflict transformation, there will not be any relapse again to other conflicts. Okay? So it's really deep, deep, deep to find out what is the problem in the conflict. So it promotes the end of violent conflict. It tries to bring warring parties together in terms of relationships and goals. It is a form of peace building and peace making. Peace building and peace making. What is the difference between peace building and peace making? Is there a difference or they are just the same words? Peace building and peace making. Do we have an idea? Yes? I, I, for in my own uh, understanding, 
parang um, it's it's a peace building is you know um, coming or reaching the peace um, with the help of a process or it comes with the process now and by the help of that you can make peace. <laughs> no. Peace building before and 
And of course, peacemaking will only take place when there is calmness. You cannot force peacebuilding when conflicts are, I mean, peacemaking when conflicts are ongoing and you want to have peace talks. People are fighting with each other. Wait, and then people are ready for issues to be resolved. That's when you can really do peacemaking because it's a lot of facilitation, mediating negotiations that have to take place at the end of it to make a peace agreement in this process. Peace so peacekeeping is during violent behaviors and conflicts. So we need to have we do this in order to have ceasefire to end the violent conflict. And sometimes it also ends with a ceasefire and <coughs> ceasefire simply means you put down your weapons. You put down your arms. People cease to fight. No more killing. Any violent conflict does not necessarily mean it has been resolved. So this time when we do peacekeeping, it doesn't mean that the conflict has been resolved. It is still there also. So what then is problem solving like we are talking about? Those are the we have had some definitions. And what is problem solving? Problem solving is an effort to find common understanding and engagement of goals and interest by conflicting parties who want to have a solution to the problem. You don't want to ignore it, you don't want to dump it, you don't want to neglect the problem that you have. You want it to be resolved. You are trying to see how you can come to a one on one understanding in order to foster peace. Because Foster peace or try to resolve issues that matter, the issues that arise. That is problem solved. And this is only possible when the problem is known and the people involved are known. You cannot solve a conflict that you don't know. It. You must know the conflict, you must know the people involved. These are actors, the people in the actors of the conflict. Okay?
must get to know the problem using communication skills. How do you know the problem? You use communication skills. But if you don't use your skills, you cannot know the problem. What are some of the communication skills that we are talking about? For example, what communication skills do you, can you think of that we, we can use in solving problems? Can you give me examples? Communication skills? Verbal, verbal communication skills? Yes. Non-verbal? Yes. Body language is non-verbal? Yes. Listening, excellent. Listening is one of the important <laughs> Listening. <laughs> Listening skills is a very, very important skill for you are dealing with all. If you cannot listen and listen and listen, an active listener, you cannot handle all this. You need a mind that is focused on listening. You need the face. You need your body and soul and everything about you when you want to listen to people in conflict. So listening is one of the most important skills in dealing with when you want to resolve conflict. Very, very important. So you apply what is not just listening, it's active listening. It's not about you sitting here and your mind is jolly no. It's not about you <laughs> sitting <laughs> here and your soul is you know, at Bank hand somewhere they tell you what you have to buy after this. You know, you have to be here present, the whole you is here. And it's sometimes difficult for us to do active listening. We are going to know why it's difficult to do active listening and what are some of the things that we can do in order to listen to other people actively as by the end of this session. These are some skills in resolving conflict also, you can also apply this. You need to predict the conflict. You don't have to wait for the conflict to really escalate before you start intervening. <coughs> you don't have to wait for personal clashes or you don't want, you don't have to wait for bad behaviors. You have to intervene on time. And if you want to really resolve issues that parties are into it, you let both parties cool down. There is no way you can intervene in a conflict that people are really quarreling or they are fighting or they are, you know, at that point where there is violence, they cannot, you cannot resolve. So you have to give time for people to cool down. You don't attempt to find solutions while everyone is boiling or while everyone is being mad. You give people time for reflection over the situation. Let them know you will resolve the problem after everyone has had some breathing, give them breathing space. Yeah? You don't just walk in and you have to You need to give them time. And you articulate the conflict. I said a while ago that if you have to mediate in the conflict, but if you want to intervene, you don't force yourself to intervene in the conflict. It doesn't have to happen. Otherwise, you will be a part of the conflict and not a mediator. So you have to be accepted by the parties in the conflict. Sometimes some people go to resolve conflict, but they find themselves as parties to the conflict. It shouldn't be like that. You have to be accepted by both parties, and you must be a neutral person, and you must be an impartial person in that conflict. If you are giving something to party A, you are giving something to shy, give that same thing to that on the same path. You don't give her something, and then you don't believe right in the answer. Casey, are we on the same platform? So you cannot solve the problem until you know what problem you are solving. Because the thing is actually like this. You have maybe a degree Let's say this is your pomelo tree or whatever you may call this. Right? How many of us like pomelo? We are really loud. I want to eat that so much. Every day clothes. Okay, so, I will order. <laughs> I will order in food by that. So, this is about pomelo tree. And we want to have nice pomelo. We are just focusing here. 
when you want to sell and spend some money, or you want to eat a bed and then you, you have some vitamins in you. But you want to have a pomelo and it has a lot of illnesses, something like man, it's not smooth. And you are just here, pruning the leaves, cutting and doing some other things. This is what you see. But you don't know that there are also microorganisms until you go here to find out what is happening to your pomelo tree. There are microorganisms here eating all the pomelo. Maybe this one is manure or fertilizers. Because without this, if you are just here throwing water and maybe just pruning here, the leaves cannot cook food. Because this food you have to take care of it in the fabric or the fibrous root or whatever. So that when they have the nutrients, when they have the water, they will transfer it to your leaves or the pomelo. And the pomelo will have what? Water or whatever it takes to cook the food and share to even the flowers of pomelo to, for you to have the beautiful and smooth fruit. But if you are just here, you will never have a little pomelo. <laughs> the same thing with conflict. You must dig deep to find out what is happening. And so if you don't come to the roots, you will never have what is the root causes. Right? If you get to this point, that's when you get the root causes of the conflict. And from this point, you get to what? This part. This is the, the cause. The core of the problem. The core problem. Yeah? And then, from here, you get to what? You get to lower the effects. These are the effects. This is what you see on the surface when there is a conflict. You see just violent, you see flashes. But if you leave out the whole of this, you cannot resolve the conflict. That is what conflict transformation tries to leave the surface and go beyond. Looking at the goals, looking at the root causes, looking at the basic needs, what is it in the conflict that the people really want? What are your basic needs? This problem isn't just a problem on the surface, but there is something that we need to dig deep to find out. Until you get to this point, you will just see people fighting here, marching on the street. You don't, if you do go there to stop them from marching, you bring military, whatever, you can bring all the military in the world to stop the effects here. But if you don't touch this, the conflict will, there will be a relapse. Because you did not touch the book. That's what's the case point. Yes. This is very important. And this core problem means what is triggering the conflict. Because the root is not stable, you don't have a good foundation, of course. You cannot have a good building. So we cut the root. Even if you cut the root, everything will collapse. So we need to dig deep, find the solution to this root, and then we get to know the core problem. Sometimes this core problem is what triggers. It's just like a volcano. Building up, you have a magmatic channel. Building, the rocks are melting always, all the time. And you know what the funny thing is? The magma will not just explode once. It takes time for what is happening. It starts gradually. And after some time, you know, there is that overpressure on it, everything. This is how human beings are. No, I cannot stand this thing. I need to burst. I need to vomit this thing. I'm looking for an opportunity. And so you see, even if there is no path, it's looking for like the mama will look for the path. The slightest fraction. Because it is buoyant at that time when you really have something in you. You are like, I'm looking for where to vomit this problem. And the least opportunity, that's when you explode. Boom. And the people will just be seeing the effects and the thing that no, it did not start there. It's a long time. You know, so for you to solve conflict, you must get to the root causes. Because if you don't do that, there will always be a relapse going back to the same. So did we get that word well, that we need to go back there so that we have food for many? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and so this in um, this is what we call one of the tools in resolving conflict, the conflict tool. I just use it. We have many tools, but this is just a kind of my drug issue. 
But if you don't go to these root causes, you cannot get what has passed. Okay. And then you should make uh, both parties feel hurt when you are trying to resolve the conflict. Let people express their minds. Because if they carry burden within them, it's not resolved. Instead of one on one time with each party to make sure that each has a chance to fully air out what is in their mind, their concerns. Then solutions that will involve collaboration, that is people sit on a table, the dialogue, what can we do regarding this? They collaborate, they compromise sometimes. This kind of methods will be more productive and ensures that the needs of everyone, every the person that is a party to the conflict are met. But if you are competing or avoiding or sometimes accommodating, this is not really the best. Anyway, we see this during our simulation exercises, times. So, managing and resolving conflicts and learning how to listen. So listen, what is listen is, it is a way of giving an active attention to someone. Listening strengthens us. When we listen, it actually strengthens us our skills and then it also informs us that the, the other person that is talking to us, he or she feels that he's hurt. When you are listening to someone and you really follow the discussion, you do active listening. You see the presence of the person that you are discussing with. You see his active attention to whatever you are talking about and you come up with an, an amicable solution. So it takes what? An empty mind to allow other things to come in. But if your mind is so... Because we have what we call jumping mind. The mind keeps on jumping like a monkey. You, you, you can listen to yourself sometimes. You realize that you will not have the same things in your mind for, for a good 10 minutes. You realize that different things run through your mind. But there is a way of doing this. You need to practice listening to yourself all the time. And that's why a lot of people practice mediation. I mean, uh, meditation. Meditation. Because you want your mind to be focused, self-centeredness. If you have a mind that is so busy all the time, it will be difficult for you to listen. So we, we already said we need to foster collaboration, compromise, we communicate expectations with everyone. This will also help us to avoid future conflicts. Why am I going to this so fast? And then we need to solicit solutions, right? Ask for potential solutions from all parties involved in the conflict. If you have co-workers involved in the conflict, you may also ask their opinion. And then when the people in the conflict see its resolution as a joint effort, it becomes more sustainable. You have something to tell us now. The opinion is yes, family name. Yes. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> your family name is opinion, so I just mentioned your name. <laughs> so we can sometimes get a solution. If we want the solution to be sustainable, we get the opinion from the people who are involved in the process. This makes it more, more sustainable. And then I would like us to move a bit to listening skills and resolving conflict. But before we get to that, I would want us to just see a small thing. I don't know how this will look like. So, yes. <laughs> so, once again, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, we will witness the role play uh, by Mr. Glenn and Ishai on how to, uh, if both parties don't listen to each other. 
And sorry, just to, just to add in the first part, you will see how uh, the listening is not really that the kind of active listening we are talking about. And in the second part, try to see, just try to pick up what they are saying to see if the listening in the second part is active listening. And then you will give your contributions at the end. Di mo ginawa. Hindi siya eh. What are you doing? Seems like you're carrying a lot of books. You know what, Shai? Uh, digital books are cheaper. <clears throat> Your device may go obsolete and may use this book. Shai, you can carry thousands of books on your device uh, with no extra weight. Oh my god, Glenn. These days, with all that's going on, we're more very likely to read a few books anyway. So, why have some thousands on the go? Shai, in digital books, you can search, you can translate, you can look up terms, and you can take well, notes. But Glenn, nothing beats the smell and feeling of, of the book in your hands. Shai, whatever. Hey, Glenn, you're not listening to me. Come on. Oh, Shai, you're still reading your book. You know what, Shai? Digital books can be purchased instantly anywhere you are, and you can start reading them right away. So, what do you mean? Is that I can just order the book? Get it instantly in my device, open it, and start reading it, even when I'm traveling? Yes, Shai, that's what I mean. <laughs> oh, Glenn, you can recall the content of the paper book much more than that, that one. Why? If you need to learn something, paper book is better than using that phone. Really? So, Shai, so what you mean is that by reading a paperback, I am more likely to remember the contents than if I, I was reading it on the digital device? Yes, yeah. it has to be proven that reading books or using books, that using that digital one is better and you can really recall the content of it. So that is what I mean. Shai, thank you for sharing your opinion. And now I realize that it's more it's more important to read paper book than, than reading my, my my device, my digital device. Okay then. So starting today, use books then the digital one. Okay, Shai, thank you. See you tomorrow. I have class. Bye. Uh, very different uh, uses 
and practicality uh, events. And both of them actually pointed out their pros and cons. That way, uh, they would be able to come up with sort of uh, understanding the middle at the end of the conversation. Yes. Any other contribution? Or observation? Or observation, yes. Anything that you observe, your actions, that you know, anything you observe that they were doing that you may like to comment on that. Oh, they were insisting on their science. They were insisting. Because they want, why were they insisting? Maybe they were trying to see, they want to be heard, something mm -hmm. like that. They want my opinion to be heard. Yes, any other? This group. This, this group is the, the, yes. the most silent.
Uh, it is important to practice that uh, if in a conflict situation you have to be interested to listen, then listen more to this. That would help. That would help. Very helpful. That would help resolve things, right? Did you enjoy that play? So the next play will be done by the drums and all. <laughs> <laughs> so managing and resolving conflicts by learning how to listen. So listen is a way of what? Giving an active attention to someone. Listening strengthens us, responds to us, makes it easier for others to hear us and takes an empty mind to allow more information than we already saw this. And then, types of listening, we talk about active listening. We strive to understand when we are doing active listening. The goal here is to understand not to win. We are understanding of who not to win an argument. We try to understand each other. And then, to learn what another person is talking about, of what the person is feeling. This does not mean agree with what the person says. Instead, active listening conveys that we try to understand the person's experience. Yeah. And then active listening can result to a new understanding of the speaker as well. When you listen to people who are active, you understand this person better. When you are having that problem with your friend or with your colleague, it's because you've never taken time to sit and really listen to what your colleague or your friend is telling or your partner. Take time to listen to the person. You don't, you listen, you get the experiences, you get what the person is, the message the person is saying and what the person is trying to say. There are some things that the person may not say, but when you engage in active listening, you convey the message that the person has not It includes symbols of arts. Undivided attention, symbol of ears, the heart, and interactive face-to-face -face process. You can't tell me you're listening to me and they don't look at me on my face. I cannot be talking to you and you're giving me your back and you tell me you're listening. I know fully that you are not listening to me. And I may have presumptions that have some perceptions about you. And these are the things that matter to our listeners. Very important. That's why I said listening is a very important skill. And then, what are the things that make people not to listen? Why is it hard to engage in active listening? The first thing is what? Internal noise. We have internal noise. We have to deal with internal noise. What is internal noise? Only you know your internal noise, and only me, I know my internal noise. What is that thing that is talking? I have a TV within me that I'm watching now, but you may not know. Yes, I have things going on in my mind, a lot of things. I may be thinking about my children in Cameroon, but that is not it. Because I'm born. <laughs> so we have things in our mind, and you know, playing, we have situations, scenarios going on in our mind. We have to take that off when we want to active this. External noise. The noise that is in our environment. Preconceived ideas. What is that? Bias. Some people like you get to the mall and immediately you see someone tie their hair with the Muslim. You don't want to take that trapped perceptions. What is that preconceived ideas? A Muslim? Why do we have that? Muslims have preconceived ideas about us. Christians have preconceived. That's an example. Why? When you have that preconceived ideas within you about somebody, when you sit on a dialogue table to talk with that person to resolve conflict, what is playing in your mind? Conceive ideas, you cannot listen to that person. What can he say? By the way, he's a Muslim. By the way, she's a Christian. I have nothing to offer. This is what you have to do. You cannot engage in active listening. So you have to do away with this. One engage in active 
active listener. And the last is clouded minds. Your minds are not free. You always think that something like Roger, something like the things that someone did to you from the 1st of January 2010, they are still written somewhere. And sometimes you should go back to recount this thing. On the 1st of December, I remember you did these things to me. You have a mind that is supposed to give space for you to do things, and you keep on clouding your mind with things that you don't need to have to do. You have to forgive. You have to let go of those things. You have to be the peace You have to do active listening. Don't close your mind. Okay. And so, what are the things now that we can do? Do you do active? How to do active listening? You have to be motivated. You have to kind of have a kind of motivation to listen to someone. What do I mean by motivation? Think of a date when somebody is directing you to come and have maybe a rendezvous. That's how do you say it? that is right? a program or a date something. You really direct, you get a taxi, you go straight. After dropping from this position, take the road to the left. After the, the yellow building, go to the next block. Ten right, ten left. You are listening, you are following up, you are motivated to get the description. Okay, I will be there in the next ten minutes. And you are right. Because you are motivated to listen to that person. You know that you are going there, you have a date, so you don't want to miss anything. You are motivated to listen. So if you have this kind of mind, you feel motivated to listen to someone, then you will engage in active listening. But if you are not having that motivation, it's difficult for you. You create space. Creating space means remove those things that are inside of your mind and throw it, those things that are not. Because our mind is supposed to, I read a book which says that our mind is supposed to understand a thousand plus words within, I think, a minute, but we are not able to do that. We can only take, I think, 400 and something, I'm not this. Going there, going left and right, and then it comes back. So we need to create space. Creating space does not mean you look for an environment and see. Creating space means you decongest your mind. Take time, sit for 15 minutes, and listen to yourself always. Try to focus on one thing, and if the mind is running, jumping, Bring back the mind, center the mind, make it to focus. It's not a force, you do this regularly so that you can always remain focused all the time. And then you make sure your body agrees with your words. Sometimes we say words, but our body is not saying those things that we are, you know. We might be saying some other things, sometimes even nodding our head, but the body is not agreeing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. Sometimes no. No. Does that mean then and yes? <laughs> but then I'm Can you show me some some kind of non-verbal non verbal For example, I'm hungry then I will I don't feel like don't okay, not enough. But yeah, I was like that. <laughs> <laughs> it simply shows that I wanna eat. So okay. oh, in the Philippines or oh, in the South <laughs> Africa that you do like this? Eat again. Yes. You wanna eat like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if I do like this, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a direction. That's the body language I've also learned here. So <laughs> it means something, right? What is that? Like I wanna kiss someone. At <laughs> pointing to pointing something. Pointing to something. Pointing to someone. Another one. It's not all about the words. You don't remember communication. It's not trying to kiss you. <laughs> it's not trying to kiss you. Just yeah. pointing direction. <laughs> yes. 
Nonverbal communication also includes gestures, ma'am. Um, for example, and our eye contact, our uh, how the way we talk. And that, uh, uh, like what the role play? The verbal. Sorry. Yes, I'm talking about non-verbal communication. If you ano, kanang nagatok. International conflicts. This is very important. How you present yourself, your posture, all of these people's posture must be respected. Like in my posture, if you do like this, this is an insult. So it was gestures, ma'am. Um, for example, our eye like contact, our uh, how. The way we talk, like what the role play, the verb. Sorry, I'm talking about some non-verbal communication. If you ano kanang nagatok ka de ba? You have your ano gestures or your body language. Maybe also the distance. The distance. Yes, yes, non-verbal. You have body. Gestures, expressions, facial expressions. What are some of the facial expressions? Sad, sad. Look at her. Look at what she's doing. Frowning. Frowning. It's okay. What is it? Yes. Rolling eyes. That means something, no? And I'm elevated. Yes. Can you just do it? No, I can't. She doesn't have eyes. I like the one shy dick. What is her face? Sometimes we do some signs like rolling eyes. I don't know how we do that. Rolling in the deep. <laughs> and then this body language or this kind of communication, body gestures are respected in public because when you sit to communicate with people, there are some kind of body gestures that you do that will really irritate other people, and some are acceptable. So you have to learn your choice. And all of this, especially when you are mediating in international conflicts, this is very important. How you present yourself, your posture, all of these people's posture must be respected. Like in my posture, if you do like this, this is an insult. Oh. So if you sit on the table and somebody comes and you do like this, it means you have insulted. That's an example. Mm -hmm. So that person, that means that the person. Yes, yes, when the person does and that is not an insult. Like, I just know that, yes, it's an insult. What does it mean? Just. Okay, just a little bit there. And maybe there are others, and maybe people like that. Back on someone to talk. I don't know if it's the same thing. It's just simply bye bye. Bye. Yeah, goodbye. Bye bye is like this for us. We can also use like that. It depends. <laughs> so, and then if somebody is talking to you and you are just like this, then you are staring the person. You know, head to foot. You just pick the person <laughs> from head to foot. Right. What does that mean? You love the person. No, no, no. You're trying to minimize the person. That's minimizing the person. So, those things we need to take note of. And then, still on non verbal communication. So, let me go back to that. We have, though people feel a lot of difficulties, they somehow manage to tell each other what they want to convey the message with the help of facial expressions, eye contact, and movement of hands. True? What is communication that fosters peace? We have uh, a way to discuss that will foster peace for us. So the kind of communication that we want should really be what we expect others to tell us, the way we want others to communicate with us. For example, the talking styles. Uh, the way we talk to each other, it matters a lot. We may say something, but the tone of the voice is different. 
right? We may be saying, to, trying to convey a message, but the kind of voice that we are using is not the voice that is needed at that particular time. So sometimes our communication, like non-verbal communication, is more than the words that we use. In fact, our body language and tone of voice often speak louder than our words. So we have to be careful whatever things we say. Uh, think for example, how <laughs> Thank you. How can you say that in a way that you will just did it? You will not match what you are saying. No, that's not the way. I am not angry. What does that mean? It means I am angry. Did someone explain it to you? Because my tone, my body, everything about me. Can you say that I am not angry meaning something else? Can you say it? I am not angry. I mean, you are, you are angry, but you are trying to say you are not angry. Using your body language, your tone. I am not angry. <laughs> I want to hear you say it. I am not angry. This is just more calm. I want some other person to say it. Yes. <laughs> Why? I am not hungry. I want to say I am not hungry. I am not hungry. <laughs> okay, say it to mean you are really not angry. Can you say that? I am not angry. I am not angry. <laughs> you think what you are saying. I am not angry. No, I am not angry. You're on a dialogue table, you talk like this. Why? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
we have to move to this uh, simulation how we can develop our problem solving skills. Look at what you have. You have something there in your folders. Yes. So they know that they can write on the Please, you have a space to write there, so you have a booklet where you can write. There is space in your booklet, I have already told you that you can use that. There is space at the So, thank you for the meeting, so let's try to facilitate this as well as we can. So we have to develop our problem solving skills. This is what we are working on now. We have this problem solving skills. The heading there is personal conflict side inventory. Do we have it? Yes. Okay, let's get to that. Let's try to look at the instructions. This is just a reflection exercise. This inventory is just for you to reflect on what we will be doing now. And if the, the, the reflection to this can create more important. Don't, don't, don't rely on this. Yeah, yeah, because what you come up with it, don't say that, okay, this is the, the, the conflict management style that I have. It's not fixed. Yes. It can change yes. at any time. So we are going to go through some responses in the first phase. When you first discover that you have some conflict or some differences exist. What I can advise you here is you should use a scenario of a conflict that you've gone through before. Just think of something that you've gone through before and then you try to answer the questions. Okay? No answer is wrong and no answer is correct. Just answer based on what you have in your mind. So, think you have a copy? We will begin when I first discovered that I had that there are differences which exist. A. I make sure that all views are out in the open and treated with equal consideration, even if there seems to be substantial disagreement. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. And on the side of towards one, moving towards one is not at all characteristic of you. And moving towards six is a very characteristic of you. So you will select the number that is closer to your own characteristic. You don't have to do copy work. This is about yourself. So that you know who you really are when it comes to managing conflicts, how you do it. So, I make sure that all views, this, all the answers here are based on when I first discovered that differences exist. So let's start with A. I make sure that all views are out in the open and treated with equal consideration, even if there seems to be substantial disagreement. So you say through the one that is about you. Is it understood? For a question. Yes, ma'am. Please, let me see if you did not understand. Hmm. If you did not understand what I asked. Yes. So you have, when I first discovered that differences exist, how do you react? You choose your answers. If this is the response. So you say through the one that... Yes, circle either one, two, three, four, or five, or six. If you are circling one, it means that this is not your response. If you are circling two, it means somehow it's not really high, very close to the characteristic of two. Do we understand? Yes. Do we understand? Please just be open to me if you don't understand what we are doing. I just I want everybody to follow. So you can see. Okay, yes. Maybe who understands best what I've just explained? You understand? Can you explain it to the others? 
Isa wala ka. May bilid dahil like o so so dali ko gusto. Sa wadi ka. Si Miss Lynn na nangyayari. Ah sige, um kaay nakaano nila ah mga paon sa nato gina overcome ang kaning conflict. So naadira ang from 1 to 6. 1 is the lowest kung not not at all characteristic. N6 is very characteristic. Kung ginabuat, yun nato siya. So, balo mas natin. Okay, are we there? So, we go to B. I devote more attention to making sure others understand the logic and benefits of my position. And I do than I do to pleasing them. Can you read it? Four. Can you read it? I devote more attention to making sure others understand the logic and benefits of my position than I do to using them. But I see. I make my needs known, but I tone them down a bit and look for solutions somewhere in the middle. You see, I make my needs known, but I tone them down a bit and look for solutions for Somewhere in the middle. Fine. Okay, let's go to E. I pull back from discussion for a time to avoid tension. Okay, let's go to E. I devote more attention to feelings of others than to my personal goals. So, circle number one, if that's all characteristics, or six, very characteristic, or something like that. And this is when I first discover, or you first discover, that differences exist. Because one thing starts with differences. Yes. And then, what letter is that? What letter? Letter. Yes. Okay, F. I make sure my agenda doesn't get in the way of our relationship. Five seconds. G. I actively explain my ideas and just as actively take steps to understand others. Four or seven. I am more concerned with goals I believe to be important than with how others feel about things. Answer. Answer yeah, <laughs> it's doing the in circle thing. So to letter I. Sige ma'am, pakibasa ko. Letter I. I decided the differences are worth worrying about. I decide the differences are worth worrying about. Let's go to J. Sir, ibasa. Sir J. To give up someone points in exchange for others. So let's go to the next one. So if differences persist, so many differences, no? And feelings escalate. Let's go to the third case. I enter more actively into discussion and hold out for ways to meet the needs of Towers, towers, towers as well as my own. Others, yeah. I enter more actively the discussion and hold out for ways to meet the needs of others as well as my own. And I put forth greater effort to make sure that the group, as I see it, is recognized and less confusing others. And I try to be reasonable by not asking for my full preferences, but I make sure I get some of what I want. Four. And I don't push for things to be done my way, and I pull back somewhat from the 
the demands of others. What are do? After all, in keeping the relationship comfortable. B. <coughs> I never act less with others and look for ways to find a safe distance. Q. Sige ma'am, pinasa. Letter Q. I do what needs to be done and hope you can be my feeling better. I do what needs to be done and hope we can mend feelings later. For R. I do what is necessary to serve the other things. Is it okay, sir? I don't know how.
Dulu yang tinggi tak ada. Boleh ni. Join my team. video nak sir. Mau post with the research. Dai pot ayo ngayo. Yes, ma'am. So now we proceed to the next So, let's look at the first column we have can. Did you see can? Yes, ma'am. And the other one we have stop. Yes. Now, on that term, we have score and we have style. Have you seen that? Yes. And the same on stomp. Yes. Also. So what we are going to do now is we go to camp. We look at our table where we have the scores. So you have to list your scores and the style names in order from highest score to lowest in both the cam and stomp columns below. Okay. For example. Let's look at Khan. 
What was there on that camp? We have, you know, how many camps do we have? There is calm above collaborating, there is calm above forcing, there is calm above compromising, there is calm above avoiding, and there is calm above accommodating. Yeah. So, let's go down under the score for calm. Which one was your highest score? Only calm score, don't use score. Don't use, uh, sorry, don't use uh, stomp. We are using only calm score to register on this side. Mm -hmm. you, it's personal, so you run the scores. For example, mm -hmm. yes, right? This is calm. So where is your highest score for calm? Mm -hmm. This is calm. This is calm. Calm here you have mind. Calm here you have faith. Calm here you have mind. Yes. Okay. So yeah. How about uh, the two highest? Please. Yeah, we can see. So there's no way for us to visualize the scores that we have. So this is called the web chart. So the web chart is basically, it's basically looks like a, it looks like a web. So like we have nearly the Five like about these categories. Yes, yeah. the, the five management sites. The company management sites. Avoiding, accommodating. So this will help us visualize the data that we have. Yes, that we ask someone. You have your data. Who has the data? Casey, your data coming is your data. Yes, this is data. Okay. Have your paper Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like for example, cases. Scores like for collaboration, uh, work nine. So nine is somewhere here. So if at the center is zero, going to the corner is the highest point. Then. So this is scores. Let's see this again. Then. Avoiding well. 
in the absence of the highest value, the management style that you use, you have that one that follows as your backup management style. That's what you use to back up. If you cannot function, for example, like here, she has the accommodating. And the second one is for collaborating. So she, she and sorry, the second one is compromise. If it doesn't work with her in accommodating, which is the highest, she will back up with this compromising in managing conflicts. And this is her preference when this agreement first arrives. Exactly. Right? So you come to peace. Yes, thank you. And this is when the conflict yes. is not resolved. And when it persists, emotions are stronger. You need more skills. How do you do? Do you avoid it? Do you run? So, yeah, like for AC, your preference would be avoid. <laughs> but when it's calm, when this agreement first arise, she tends to accommodate yes. the other part that is having first. You should finish because I want to know your styles. So what are these characteristics that make for this leader? Um, like I said, all the styles, they are useful. There are some times that you may want to avoid, there are some times that you will accommodate, there are some times that you collaborate, there are some times that you force a compromise. Anyway, let me finish to get to that. So, no style, you can say, it depends on the conflict situation that you find yourself as a peace builder, what you will have to do. How about if a person has the highest style, uh, as forcing as the highest score for this one, and then the other one is also forcing? What does that mean? Like, it's very forceful. <laughs> Always force. It actually, it actually means when the conflict first starts, you really want your goals. To be seen, you are fighting for your goals. You are competing to achieve your goals. You don't care about the other person. Yeah. You, you are fighting to achieve your goals. You are fighting to achieve your what is this? You don't care about uh, the other person's, you know, goals. You only force because you want to have what you want. You are competing. It's like the force when disagreement arrives, and then the tensions get stronger, you still force. So you force all the way. <laughs> I, I think that if you force all the way, it's not really uh, an appropriate conflict management style because the style must not be like, you know, especially dealing with conflicts, you don't have to be forcing and forcing and forcing to go out. You might, you might not have the best outcome for both parties. So that's why I say it's not static, it's dynamic. So you may have it today, but depending how you manage the conflict, and then use a conflict scenario to do this, you will actually get to, to see that it's changing also. And this is not something standard. It's just for you to give a reflection about what styles you are using. There is nothing fixed. Don't you say that idea. because and I don't need this is who I am. No, it's just to give us a reflection on how we can work on our conflict management style and improve on our skills. Are we done? Yes, ma'am. So, can I start with the first person? No, no, no. more creative than me. Wow, this is <laughs> nice. Like the real web. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Mike, what are you saying? Mine looks like. Um, wow. They were very creative. Wow. 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 Wow.
the actual uh, rolling against time law. Let's what's what was your style when conflict first starts? When disagreement first starts? What do you have? Accommodation and collaboration. When it starts, when it first starts, when it 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 starts, when in store, I have uh, collaboration, accommodation, and yet compromise. compromise. So the best style that you are using and is accommodation and when it gets stronger. Yes. yes. The, highest. the highest is collaboration. Okay. Collaboration. Collaboration for what's your name again? Carlos. Carlos, thank you. Next, JP. JP! Buy a new name. Yes, JP everywhere. Yes, give us yours. When it first starts, what do you have for now? The highest is? Highest, I know. Collaborating and sing. Okay, then the next. Accommodating. So you are always collaborating or you work more with accommodating. Then the next one you are judging the first two. Avoiding. Oh, when it gets strong, you avoid. No more conflict. Thank you. <laughs> the next. I like that. Yes, yes, yes. Not done. Very concentrating. Yes, Jeff. Yes. Natasha. Oh, I like your creativity. So what happens to you, Atasha, when you first realize that there are disagreements in time? What do you have? Collaboration. You collaborate? No. Wow. The next, the next after collaboration, what do you have? Compromise. You compromise. You collaborate. Let's dialogue. And then the next you compromise. Okay. Maybe I let go of some things. Let's have win lose. Okay. So here, yeah, what do you have? When things are not resolved. It escalates. Force. You force. No. <laughs> I like that. It's a good negotiation. You force. Okay. Thank you. The next, you compete. Mine is fun, forcing and compromising. Yes, here. Yeah, when you start. Yeah, forcing and compromising. On set. On set. On set. On set. Next one is still forcing and collaborating. Oh okay. <laughs> Forcing, it doesn't work. We try to collaborate. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, the first one, actually, I, I got the same score. Mm -hmm. Five side, saw, and then saw. Mm -hmm. So eight side. Mm -hmm. I don't yes. understand what yeah, she got. Equals course for everything. So oh, it is balance. So you are yeah. using wow. everything. You try to avoid. You try yes. to compromise. You try to avoid yeah. yeah. bit of like a government. And when it persists, how do you do it? Because you are still studying the environment of the company, that's why you are trying to use everything. So, in the next, when it continues, it persists. What do you do? The storm. The storm. Um, nine four six. Nine four six. <laughs>
then Percy and accommodate then avoid it. Okay, when you are one. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Big chance. How do you pronounce it? Chance? Chance. Okay, chance. Okay, first they collaborate and then for C. Then so second they collaborate with Collaborating and Collaborating and forcing. Not collaborating and forcing. Collaborating. Yes. Without. <laughs>
uncompromising. And in compromising, you are really kind of bargaining. You reduce some of your expectations because you want to, you know, like have the other person's view also. And this will be win-win for both of you. I mean, win-lose for both of you. And then if it is the case whereby you say, okay, since he's the one providing for me, anything that he will say, I will accept. Any decision that he takes, I will accept. No matter even if he will beat me up, I will accept, especially husband and wife. I accept. Even if you will beat, even because if I don't accept, where will I have income? Any decision that he gives you, even if he's deciding for you, you take it. What are you doing? You are here. You are doing accommodating. Because you are only looking at the relationship, you don't care about your goals. Okay, and then if it is the case whereby you really want everyone to sit on the table, let's dialogue. What is it that you want? What is it that I want? Let's come up with a solution. Both of us, that is concrete. That I win and you two win. All of us are happy. Our perceptions are addressed. The root causes are addressed. Our relationships are addressed. Our goals are addressed by both of us having a solution that is tangible and sustainable. What are you people doing? Collaborate. That is collaborate. Collaboration. For you are what? Cooperating. So that is what we have done. Which therefore means there are some situations that you can need this, you can use this, there are some situations that you can use this, some situations you can use, you need to use the stats, right? Depending on the perfect situation. But we want to move towards this and this. Questions? <laughs> Observations? Contributions? If not, we have questions. If not, I will say it's lunch time. Okay. That's a question. Can they, like, can they use this wine to cover this? Like, they don't burn some people today, or like, must be advocates or peace, but they want them peace counselors if there are like. Exactly. And they use this to, to assess those exactly. children. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. We are doing this because I want you to employ this. Try to see if it works. Remember, we say that you, and I remember uh, Richard says you are needed to do something after this. He mentioned something like this that you want to, they want you people to do something in other schools and he wants that you can use this. Skills, two hours to do this. Can you say something about that, Shai? Um, some of the peer advocate members are um, engaging in different activities outside the school, like we are giving a lecture about mental health to the students. That is a peer-to-peer -peer approach. So we can use this one. Yes, you can incorporate this as part of the activity. Yes. That's what Richard was telling me. So we need to put our airports on this. Anyway, we have an action plan at the end of this workshop that we will work together on it to see how we can engage other schools. Okay? We don't have questions. Any other thing? So we go for lunch. Can we say it's lunch time, JP? Um, yeah, according to my schedule, yes. So our lunch time. I have all the. No, I started finish. I'm still drawing my. All the orders. We will be back. We are going to give ourselves timing so that we we'll come back at the right time. We'll be back at twelve thirty. No. What time do we start? No, 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 no. What's too long? One hour is too long. So let's say 1.15 we are here, please. So let's go for lunch. 1.15.
Chuba Chuba dance. Before we do the shot, why we wait for the others? Chuba Chuba Chuba. Okay. You know the dance. You know it. You know the song. You know it. You can lead. You can lead. No. Please let's. When you are singing it already. Okay. Chuba Chuba. Let's try. Let's try. I don't know. Come on, everybody. What's up and what's down? Don't be afraid of the boogie man. You got a little of this, you got a little of that. And now let's do that sugar dance. Sugar up, sugar, 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 sugar down, sugar, 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 sugar left, sugar, 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 sugar right, sugar, 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 sugar. Huh? Oh, sing it, let's hear. We have a yoga version of that. <laughs> Come on, everybody, what's up and what's down? Can you sing it? Come on. Come on, everybody, what's up and down?
So long as you are involved in that committee, I want you to write, write it. Take your time, you have some meetings to write down. So the guidelines I will give you will be, could be, guidelines.
you plus your if the conflict is if you are comfortable to share your conflict, you can share it. Okay, we will share our conflict so that you guys would understand. I will begin so that my partner here will be able to read properly. <laughs> Alright, so the conflict started when me and my colleague, um, she's a nice, beautiful lady with a dark secret. So what happened is we had a procurement plan procurement is when you want to buy something and um, unfortunately um, for her I am new to the company at that time and we were I am following the protocols that uh, requires us to actually have the uh, comparison of the suppliers okay and then she always tried to find a way to say uh, you know to, to cut the process into half or to almost nothing to compare with the price or the item that we are trying to buy. As a result, she can or they can manipulate the way they price and the procurement plan as a result. In a way, um, that is a violation, direct violation to our company as well as to the process that we do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. <clears throat> Having said that, um, we had a very nice uh, argument at first uh, sorry, it was discussion. The person becomes argument and then it related to a very conflict uh, workspace uh, environment. We started with a chat uh, on a you know written chatting type uh, discussion until it ended up on the email exchange, a heated uh, email exchange, and then it went to a verbal uh, con uh, confrontment in front of uh, uh, each other, and then went to our supervisor. She always wanted to cover up the mess that she did, but she didn't uh, do a good uh, plan on how to actually cover that kind of mess. And she ended up being investigated by our company. It was not my, um, let's just say, um, task to do that, but I have to report it in a way that it is uh, in my way when I was doing my procurement plan. So what she wanted is to just like, cover up everything so she can probably take advantage on that uh, kind of uh, let's just say uh, process so she could probably gain some profit or gain some financial advantages on it and it is not allowed in that particular company we, we are working of course it is not allowed in any other company but um the way she did it is uh, uh, very difficult for us to actually accept it how they her in the company for so long that means she had done it uh, uh, many times. So as a result, we always try to find a way not to immediately confront uh, the person. Maybe she can actually justify that particular situation we, where we actually just try to have conflict. But uh, as a result of the investigation, she, we found out that the entire process from many, many years uh, past was unearthed meaning her dark secret wasn't real. Um, without me really trying to push for that, uh, it escalated from a small snow ball to a bigger snow ball then it ended up her in trouble. Now, uh, I share to you my first and one most unforgettable topic that I have, me and my loved one, and until now, oh my God. Oh, and until now, recently um, that I the most unforgettable comment that I have is that I got three over 30 in our long quiz and it is because of my classmates who chose quiz first before doing the oral recitation and discussion and because of that it made me triggered as a person and I was so exasperated at that time and again because of my classmates who voted quiz first before our oral recitation and discussion so for me it became most unforgettable because it is the most lowest score that I've got when I, since the, the first day of senior high school then it broke my expectation that I should get a higher score from first in order to maintain my high grades. Very good. So my observation uh, with my partner, I have the 
his communication skills is, of course, uh, he is very excited to have a, a good grades. Uh, unfortunately, his classmates are not cooperative. As a result of a very unorchestrated <clears throat> and undiplomatic way of forcing your idea, um, you end up with a strong force you know, bouncing back to you. So uh, his verbal communication, like voicing out um, during the session probably or during the time that their teacher actually asked them, um, is a way like revolting against the entire crowd. And that makes it quite difficult for him to convince their uh, their classmate or his classmate rather. And his body language, but not actually by not actually liking the idea of having the quiz first, oral later or oral first quiz later, um, just amplify his stand that he's really against the crowd. So, which makes it more difficult for you to actually convince your. Uh, um, classmate as well, and of course, if you show a democratic way of um, ruling, not really ruling, but uh, uh, let's just say influencing your classmate, it would actually help you uh, resolve conflict in a less harsh. Way. It would you would gain an advantage as a result of your diplomacy over the or influence. <laughs> so, giving the fact that the JP is older than me. That his experience of older <laughs> <laughs> than me, just a bit younger than me. More, more experience. And more experience. It's more serious than mine. Aside from that, I would observe that he that the way he delivers or conveys his message or words is that he speaks formally and more comfortable than me because of me myself i'm a nervous type of person second he has this body language like the use of his eyes the way he conveys his message here it, it was really um like he experienced he was really really experienced that kind of scenario that happened in his life and that kind of conflict that he was trying to say hey. Hey. Oh, yeah, no. Especially when I talk about religion, 
it is something or it is actually a never ending topic, right? Um, I tend to stand on what I really believe in and, and I have noticed that it always ends up having conflict with the one that I am talking with. So right now, um, I have realized that so that I will be able to avoid conflict, I will not argue with the person. It is totally fine if she or he will not respect my side. That's his decision. And I will go and I will now proceed to the um, skills of communication and listening skills of uh, um, Ate Gray. Um, she listens attentively. Um, she pays attention the moment that I'm talking and we're having eye to eye contact. And she paraphrased what I have said and I feel important because of that. <laughs> and she also gave her Mama na 
since nila pa ako mama nag-abroad um, kay Camilo Mendozong kuwan sa kung mangod duha na mi magsuod tapos kung papa tapos kung papa na trabaho na sa Joe kung papa na decide na magkuha og maid okay okay so ba eh so ang so na itabot na ako ng trip kaya lang kuwan Gabi siya, gabi ito siya na itabo Anang Nakamata ko ba kay something lang eh Na itabo Something lang So what to Wala naman siguro mo sa ina itabo So Wala
mas nagipilit ko na ako siya kaysa sa whole studies. Why nakasap ko bilin uh, sa uh, semester ko yung sariyaka? Yes, kaya nabagsak ko. Nabagsak ko kasi yung That's why. Thank you. You need all the time inspiration and distraction.
because I keep on studying. I will find the perfect time for us to discuss about that problem or I can probably express my side of it. Then what I observe about her is that she she keeps on making eye contact with me when I keep when I tell her that I'm so sorry. <laughs> Kind of, it's very helpful because it reminds me, or it simply tells me that uh, each one of us has its really own story and has own experience of life, and it helps me as a leader of our department that I need to be open-minded. I need to open my mind, my heart, my ears to them to listen to their problems in order for me to become an effective leader and every talk to them. Wow. Wow. Yes. Um, I observe that um, while we are uh, communicating, uh, we are discussing about uh, what uh, the conflicts that we had. I think everybody. Uh, tries to listen to the uh, to the one on the front. I think uh, it is the application of what we have learned yeah. on the Everyone on your, was trying to focus yeah. to the people who were presenting. Yes, that's really Yes. Yes, you're saying something. Can you speak to all of us? Yes. Yes. Can you speak it out? <laughs>
Did you have that yeah. state? No. Yeah. We all have yes. <laughs> it will normally happen because there are some things. Why is it like that in conflict situation? Because you need what? Safe place. What is that? Safe place, a safe environment. You are not sure of the person you want to talk about your conflict. It's so normal because if you realize in most conflict situations, when people want to resolve conflict, they say they want a neutral party or they want a third person so that they are going to go what to build trust. They want to be sure that where they are, they are safe and what they are sharing, there is security. No one will, you will not feel hurt after sharing your story. What happens if I share this conflict with this person? What happens next? So we need a safe place. And did you notice that some people said when they were sharing their conflict, they felt that they were hurt and they were comfortable to share it because they already know this person. Did you get that? This means sometimes when you are talking to somebody, your openness, your communication depends on the person that you are discussing with the and sometimes you also come to sit to discuss with somebody based on the fact that you don't, the person does not have any previous information about you or cloud or, you know, something like the person who betray you later on. There is the person who, whom you are talking to is someone that you really trust and you are sure that when you share this thing, the person will not, uh, you know, your story is safe. Your conflict, you are actually safe in the hands of that person. Right? So we, there are some of the skills that we already practice here. We already try to practice like the eye-to-eye -eye contact, uh, body language. I don't know whether face, somebody expressed the face gesture here that the person was like, you know. So, uh, I think we have to watch this kind of skills when we are discussing with people in conflict situations. We just work on it in our daily activities. Well, thank you very much for that. And then we'll move on to the next uh, exercise, the next simulation. You already have the papers with you there, I think. You have it. Can you check your folder? You have some papers there. No, not this one. Moving up, something like that. Did you see that? Yes. Oh, yeah, moving up in your career. Yes. 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 So we will have our two boys, I mean, two girls, one boy in a group. Two boys. Maybe they can join together. Yes. We can mix that, right? We are going to mix that. Yes. 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 So let's form groups of three. Let's count one, two, three, one. What if you count like two people with six people? Say the one here to eat. No, one, two, three, and then all the five. These are like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 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 one to five? Yeah, one to five. Okay, let's count one to five. All the five, all the ones. So many Four. Four. One, two, three, four. One. Five, 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 five. five. <laughs> one, two, three. Three. Four. Four, 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 four. Okay, all the fours together, all the ones, all the fives together. So, yes, two, one, five. So you move three. Four, four, five, five, four. Five, four. four. Four months. So, one more participant.
Which group? Five. 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 Kawai kawai number five. Number five, team Wagi. Team number one. Kawai kawai, team number one. Team number two. Four. Kawai kawai. Kani. <laughs> okay, you have a scenario with you? You can sit in groups of three, not like this. You can face each other. <laughs> so, we have a scenario there. This is moving up in your career, and the focus here is improve skills in resolving conflicts. Conflict management skills, communication skills, and listening skills. You relate the workshop with a real life experience at the job site and managing interpersonal conflicts to build peace. Okay? So we have three uh, people to act here. So now we move from our, we are now on our next simulation. We are through with developing skills in conflicts and now we are on what to do. Developing problem solving skills at the job site. And we already have the simulation dealing with workplace conflict, right? Moving up in your career. So let's listen as <coughs> she read it for us. <coughs> No, she is just with yeah. and then we follow. Yeah. So Rasa feels really good about her new job. Her supervisor seems happy in her performance. She, le she learned everything she needed to learn and is all around putting herself to be a good employee. Most people at the factory are close to one another and seem like a family. Rosa hasn't spent any time getting to know any of them since she has been spending her time learning her new job. Now, she can perform her job as well as or better than any of the other workers. Rosa was able to lobby for new programs for the organization and revive the former status of the organization. She loved her job very well and she is very productive and her boss really appreciates her work and love working with her. Rosa, through her personal initiative, had opportunities to travel to other countries to build her capacities for her job. Lately, Rosa's boss starts to be, to be moody, but Rosa was still very efficient in her work. Rose sir received a mail from her boss informing her that no letters of recommendation will be signed for her by her boss. I think this is Rosa. Yes. Be signed for her by her boss until further notice, and her boss explained that she will be very busy for the next period of time. Rosa accepted and continued to work efficiently. Few days later, things broke in a neighboring office, and Rosa's boss decided to change the lock of the office for security reasons. Rosa was not aware since the incident took place over the weekend. Rosa came to work on Monday morning and tried, tried to open the office with her key, but the door did not open. She called her boss after hanging outside for some time, and her boss explained to her what happened. Came and about an hour later and opened the office with a new key. Apologized to Rosa for not inform her, informing her on time. Rosa later discovered that all other colleagues had a printed copy of the new key except her. Again, Rosa realized that her office stamps were missing after searching her, in her drawer and everywhere and everywhere. She reported to her boss and they looked for the stamps together and never found the stamps. 
Her boss also confirmed that she had not seen the stamps lately. Later on, they and they both found the stamps in the drawer of her boss' office, and her boss could not remember when she took the stamps. Few days later, Rosa was about entering the office, and here's her name mentioned by colleagues and boss conversing in the office, but she did not get details of the conversation. But the moment she entered the office, there was a brief silence. Rosa started feeling uncomfortable at work, but does not really understand what was happening. <laughs> Few days later, Rosa's boss informed her that they need to put heads together on a project proposal that Rosa had submitted to partners. When Rosa and her boss sat together, and her boss was about to open the project, her boss instead mistakenly clicked and opened a mail that her boss had written, replacing Rosa in her position with another colleague, but had not declared it openly to Rosa. Rosa read the mail, and her boss did not close the mail since it was already open. Rosa was so tense and became very angry. Storytelling. Children storytelling. <laughs> and quickly tried to figure out the series of past events in her mind. Her boss realized that a problem has been created and started opening up to Rosa at a time when she wants to give her position to another Toby. But Rosa never uttered a single word after all the explanations from her boss. Yes. So the questions? Assume that you are the boss, how will you deal with this conflict with Rosa? The other person will assume that you are Rosa. And how will you deal with this conflict with your boss? And another, and the observer. And the observer will? will actually, you will actually observe what is happening and when the conflict is uh, resolved, you will also have to present what the role you play in the conflict and how it is resolved. And the observer may also make suggestions of how the boss did that. You can also, also contribute, that's what I'm saying. You have to have details of details. So, can we move? You have to do a presentation at the end with this. With what you will come up with, the final you do presentation. Yes. Yes, you will write. Do I call them actors? No. So we have the boss. We will have the boss. We will have the workers and then we will have the observer. Okay. So in your workers group, you will choose who will be the boss, who will be the observer. Be the worker. One. Group five. Two. The second group. Group two. Yes. yes. No. Group three. Four.
Okay, good morning ladies. Thank you for coming to my office. Uh, I am calling you because we have some very important things to discuss today. And um, at first I would like to apologize to you, Rosa, because uh, we had an awkward uh, situation earlier that we were able to actually read the email that was not intended for you to, to read what we did have. But it is as a mean that we do not want or that we do not want to help us in our organization. As a matter of fact, we have great plans for you. We actually want you to lead us in a different level. That way, we can help our organization be a better company and deliver the services that we want in our that, that, that our client actually needs. Um, Nina here, a real name, uh, will be uh, taking the position that you're supposed to have because she's new. We wanted you to help her and guide her to deliver the project. As a result, you will be taking a, uh, a level in which Nina and the rest of the project managers uh, will be reporting. Oh, about the key is actually my fault. I actually forgot. And you know, I'm getting older and forgetful. I actually got this done. And um, <laughs> it's really my fault. I'm sorry. That's, you can take that to the other person. All right. Yes. 
And I really realized that Rosa was happy when the boss, uh, you know, apologized. And then, even the way she talked, oh Rosa, I don't know what were your feelings when your boss apologized. You were happy though. Yeah. And I want to come back more adrenaline. And you want, you are grooming her for a new position. But exactly. also notice that we, the observer, what, can you say something about the observer? What happened to the observer? The one who was... She was not longer the observer. She was not longer the observer. What did she do? She turned out to be the job one of the workers. Why did she participate? She participated, but the point here is she became one of your characters. One of your what is that? One of your the one who worked. She did. She participated, and then she did. It means she has two functions that she played. The observer and then she she's like acting like someone who is the person who is the show that there's actually three half boys involved that just lost at the boss because there was another person. They are they added another person. So thank you very much. Thank you. 
Very good. I've been doing 
escalating into violence. In the first part, did you notice that? Yeah. yeah. When they met here, when they started here, did you see what was happening? He did not want to talk to the observer. He was like fighting his way into the office and he said, hey! <laughs> You know, like he can, he's really ready to, to fight. So, what else did you notice? Do you think for this situation, if they have started to very, it was very emotional. They were very emotional. Did you? Yes, they were very, very emotional and they were very tense. And what about the communication that passed through? What did you hear? What was the boss saying? Did you hear her? Um, she said, calm down. And then what other things was she saying? The boss was saying, Alibi. <laughs> <laughs> this is Alibi. And Alibi before the kid. She was just testing the employee. Oh, that's the word I'm looking for. Testing. Thank <laughs> you. 
me. <laughs> so you are not getting, I hope the camera is getting this week because I need this. Okay. So the next one. Do you still have some things to say to them? And maybe I'd like to get something. <laughs> <laughs>
hear from uh, from you, from you both as boss and from you as third employee because uh, there are things that we need to discuss on process as it is uh, as it is the protocol of our company. So, is it okay for you to the feature on yeah, yes. I will set the schedule for you. So, but <laughs> okay, <yes. laughs> um, Okay. Then 
So in this case, we realize that who was the observer? The HR became the the observer became the HR. Okay, and there is also another aspect that you mentioned about that Rosa, 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 Rosa was very. You said he was very passive about the conflict. Also, did not because a series of events happened. Yeah. From the refusal of the letter to keys he did not have, and uh, uh, what's this? He, he was that the letter that he saw. Nothing. No, it was only on the letter that Rosa started raising his uh, and then the stamps. Yeah. Rosa said nothing, and then when they were gossiping, Rosa said nothing. Else. So Rosa, were you, I don't know, is that really stonewalling? What were you doing? What, why were you passing? Why were you doing? The reason why you also... I, I think Rosa has <laughs> 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 You're the boss. Rosa, why were you not passing? Or the series of events you did not bother to check or even ask the boss, why are you doing this to me or even... Yeah, because uh, being a uh, well, I'm a new employee, the uh, in this company is uh, you mean your your uh, make your boss your uh, uh, make impress your boss on, on how you are to work and to improve your uh, how to improve the company. That's. That <laughs> was that that situation that uh, Rosa need to explanation of of this of you know explanation yung boss why she why she are replacing kids without any <laughs> you can, yes, yes, that's what. And another case, the boss. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. okay, yes. Okay, uh, yes. What I'm trying to understand is from what Rosa is saying, you are trying to please your boss because you are new in the company. Is that what you are doing? Um, you are trying to impress. Impress the what you are You try to impress your boss, which means you are not looking at your goals. You are only looking at the relationship with your boss. So you were kind of trying to avoid the And what I will say here is, in as much as you are looking at the relationship, you also need to look at your goals. Because this could also affect you. When you are disturbed, you will not have the vision how to do that. So, in that place, in that position, what you need to do is that we see the way that you can handle this, not necessarily causing conflict. You, like, for example, you could tell your boss, I'm there. I would like that maybe you give me some comments about my work. Am I really performing my task well? This is creating a room for your boss to sit with you and talk with you. Maybe there are some lapses or there are some gaps that he needs to fill, that you need to fill. That when you create this room, that I would like you to say something about my work because you have already had them talking about you. In this way, you are trying to stop her from, or your boss from talking at your back when there are things that concern you. When you sit with her, maybe she can try to air this out with you. You don't have to avoid all the things. I know sometimes you will also need proofs before you try to, uh, you know, before you try to put forth your ideas or whatever. But you already have some proofs. For example, the keys everybody had, you did not have. And again, uh, you heard them talking about you. And when you come inside, people stop talking about you. You know, that's not brief silence. When you're coming, people are talking and you heard your name immediately, you step in, 
silence. These are some kind of signs that you can already try to see how you can create a forum. Maybe even invite your boss that you can sit somewhere and have a coffee or something. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> the fact that it's your boss doesn't mean that you have to, you know, kind of let go of your own feelings. Because if you don't feel well, you cannot, you cannot also work well. So you need to balance the things. Yeah. So do we have other observations to make regarding that? So can we clap for that? Let's welcome group number five. No, number one. Or the message. 
by giving another way so that you can get out of that situation. So that's the idea. It's actually a conflict way, uh, a way of resolving conflict in a more less harsh way. That's all. But <laughs> is that your, were you making an alibi? Making it like an alibi, the image? But why? But, but why are you making an alibi instead of just directly addressing the conflict? Having said that, you are going to promote. I don't know, just I don't think you Sorry, it's a young apple. I don't know, I don't know. 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 I Yes, yes, it's just to avoid the conflict. Something like you want to neglect the conflict. You want to be passive, you don't want to run away. But it, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, this is a So, what do you still have? Are you done? So it's kind of the boss who apologize to the worker. The boss will apologize, explain why those things you did. And then you give some but it's not as partial So in that case. In that case, who is the worker here? Who is the employee? You are the employee. Are you satisfied with the solution? Yes. <laughs> In real life situation, are you satisfied with this? Yes. We have been dumping or covering things with 
or do we only buy on, online? We have to go back to those things that can really transform, convict, transform our relationships positively. That is the essence. There is no need trying to like to want to avoid it, something that is existing. Remember, we said when you avoid a conflict, it is not resolved. It is still there waiting for you, and it's building. Sometimes it will explode, just like a dormant volcano that will become active. Sometimes, yeah. so it's not all conflict that we need to avoid. So, like what JP is saying, that we most of the time we try to dump JP. To provide cushion. This is not what it's supposed to be done. So we need to improve on this. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, a round of applause for all of us. So just to round up, uh, this is what we have. We have the practice, we have the board, we have those. And then we were talking about the observer who was there and some of us are happy that we use the observer to play human resource role. Some people use the observer. We must get to know the problem using communication skills. How do you know the problem? You use communication skills. But if you don't use your skills, you cannot know the problem. What are some of the communication skills that we are talking about? For example, what communication skills can you think of that we, we can use in solving conflicts? Because we are doing what creative problem solving. That's why we have to do all of what we did. So I'm very happy. Can we clap for ourselves? So what were the issues, the concerns, or the context that we had? We have a lot of things. There was Moody would not sign a letter of recommendation, change the law of the office without informing Rosa. And then others had the key. Rosa did not have, you know, the email that was replacing Rosa with another person. And these were the issues in the conflict. So what happened next? We have the opportunities that Rosa had to travel. Rosa, because these were the positive things about Rosa in her job. Remember, she liked her job. She was very proactive, very efficient, and doing her work very well. It's a healthy work makes me mix. Yes. So, um, suddenly when she saw all of these things happen, she, she was not really comfortable with her work again and then she became angry and you know, she was feeling like she would be replaced. But I'm happy that you came up with solutions for one of the solutions. It shows that Rosa will not abandon her job. Rosa and her boss will be in good relationship and Rosa will be doing what? Moving up in her career. So we finally handle the conflict as peace builders. Okay, so that is it. Do we have questions? We have yes. Yes. contribution, Shin? Yes. James, do you have something to say? Any other contribution? I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> You're hungry, yes. I think one approach to analyzing the situation is also using the timeline. Like analyzing the using timeline, like, like these things will be there, like. The boss and the Time is a very important factor also in voting. What is happening in the duration? And you try to, like what you say, from the beginning, it was very, very mild. And you see, it started growing. And that takes me to something that she just uh, mentioned. From the beginning, it was just. I have a sheet, it was famous. So, from the 
Sorry, she I did not get it. Yes. Yes. So there is this very from all the elementary and secondary school. They have uh, ch children very care, very small. Child friendly. Child friendly. Child friendly. Child friendly. They post it there. Child so friendly. they have these requirements. They comply with those requirements to make it child friendly. <clears throat> but that, for like, like the that is school zone. School zone. Yeah, that's why it's a school zone. That's why we are here. Just like what the peace builders also, we are trying to make ourselves like peace builders. We are not saying that we are going to stop conflict. No, we cannot stop. I think maybe as peace builders right. we can lead yes. to something yeah. like what JP is. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. You can speak first. But yeah. what I'm trying to actually ask is, if, is there a way to have a measurement or have a uh, prevention measures? So that the, the conflict will not not so escalate. Is that or what even spark. The conflict yes, because, yes. because yes. that's when you know the differences start. Like for example, if you're very, very competitive and my seatmate is also very competitive, then we will race to the end until we would see who will be first, something like that. And that actually can spark. Conflict. Because now you see your siblings as competition and as friends, or work so, within that matter. So uh, if, if, if we actually work in a harmonious environment with common goals that achieve uh, mm -hmm. betterness, improvement, mm -hmm. uh, future peace, that's yeah. what I'm trying to ask. In a more um, mm -hmm. basic, yes. easy to digest, mm -hmm. and really you know, point to point for the teens to actually. You want to say something? Yes, yes ma'am. Um, I I know some organization had their assessment uh, every every week for them to self criticize and criticize with each other for so that those conflict between them can be addressed immediately. So it can also help to have a, a harmonious relationship with each other. Yes, yes. Self-criticism and criticism. So you will criticize yourself of what you uh, you think uh, you do wrong or something like that. And then you also criticize the other person so that you can meet halfway on, on, on how to deal with that. Okay. There are some other organizations. Yes, 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 that. yes, yes. Thank you very much for that. What I want to say is that this culture, this environment that you want to talk about is something that will be created only by you. You own the solution to the problem. But if you refuse to own the solution, you just want to compete and escalate the conflict, then it will be escalated. But if you want to resolve, if parties in agree that they want to resolve the conflict, then the conflict will be resolved or it will be transformed. Because the essence is for us to prevent the conflict not to escalate and not to spark. Spark. The word to use. Yes, so it is possible for us to do that. We can do that in the peace building, that we have our activities as peacemakers. If it is at the job site, you see that example all the issues that are happening there, you try to address them. Don't allow them to accumulate fire and fire. Or even in a family relationship, we can live in a culture of peace. The problems will come, but how do you manage them? How do you handle them? This is making the culture of peace. That is what matters because we cannot stop it. Then we can prevent them from escalating into violence. Yes. So that is why we have this family. We are going to kind of try to come up with something. Okay, okay now we will move on. And I would like to say that in the absence of well, if you have questions, that's the end of my presentation. But I still welcome some questions. Do you have questions? No questions. Okay, thank you very much. That will be the end of my hour from morning to night. But we are still together. We have some things to do. Our evaluation, action plan within the next 30 minutes, and then we close. Okay? Yeah.
And the prize award also and our snacks. Alright. Just stay in your seat. Please pause. Pause. Uh, what do you call that? How about the action? Yes. 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 Did you like the pizza? Yeah. Okay, so like, like as promised, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think So we need a uh, the paper to put it there. Uh, you like it? Just make a
Please, please, can we just listen? The Rizal Memorial College Incorporated RMC Buildings, Poblacion 7, Elo Design and Empower Streets, Marquari Heights, the City Philippines. Present this certificate of appreciation to Frankie Lovely Muma. As an expression of our gratitude for sharing her time, effort, and expertise as a resource speaker during the Peace Workshop, training for creative problem solving skills in conflicts. Given this 29th day of January 2019 at the Rizal Memorial College is incorporated the Abbas City Philippines. Signed, Richard Salvador Jimenez, RGCRPM, Head Guidance and Custody Department, Professor Jerome C. Bugas, LPT, LLD, Human Resource Manager, yours truly, Dr. Albert G. Mosico, Principal, IBED, Senior High School, and WSP, Tony Ernesto Rafael B. Rodilio, our Vice President for Administration. Thank you. Jason, Jason, what you have to do? Mom, I'm going to go to the Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. So please, uh, please, sir. Uh, you will award our certificates also. Yeah. We the one who award the certificates to the participants from the closing remarks. This is mine. So can we just be seated? <laughs> Okay, good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon. So I'm very glad to be here with you guys this afternoon with your workshop on peace, right? Training for many problem solving skills in conflict. Actually, this endeavor is quite significant, more especially to college students and of course incoming college students because we can't deny the fact that we are very prone to conflicts. Conflicts within ourselves, conflicts within other, among others, and conflicts within the society or environment we are living in. Actually, when we say conflict, the word conflict is universal, by the way. So what might be conflict to me is not conflicted to you. What might be conflicted to you is not conflicted to me. So it depends how we're going to acquire the word conflict or understand the word conflict. But in our self, we need to deal with conflict as a challenge to ourselves. Why? Right? Sometimes we have this conflict, but later on, as we resolve the conflict within ourselves, we can be really sure that we are doing our best to become more successful in life. So just like you, students, if you want to be more successful in life, the very challenge here is resolving our own conflicts. Know yourself better. Because if you don't know yourself better, you will not succeed. If you know yourself better than others, of course, there is a bigger possibility that you can improve the way you are at the same time. You can improve your behavior, you can improve your uh, how to deal with other people, something like that. So this is a very good avenue, this is a good venue to all of you. Within one day, I hope that you really learn a lot in terms of resolving creative problem-solving skills in conflict. And I know that your speaker is pretty good in this topic. She has his expertise. And I hope that you learned a lot from her. And this is quite uh, a very unique forum to be with her from other country and the audience is from the Philippines. I think this is quite, uh, this is a very good avenue for us to learn what culture you have in resolving conflicts and at the same time the culture of the Filipinos in resolving conflicts. So with this, in behalf of the Rizal Memorial College's administration, we are very glad to have you, ma'am. I hope that you will come across or um, along RMC all the time. You're uh, very welcome in our campus. So if you feel free to visit us, I think the Richard Memorial University will contact with you. And of course, we are very much willing to, to accommodate you in our school. So we are very glad to have you, and at the same time, we are very glad to have these people who are very much willing to learn about the topic. So thank you and good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.